On this nondescript industrial estate in Aldershot, some very specialised work takes place. Army bomb disposal expert Kim Hughes is here to take advantage of it. Kim, how are you? Good to see you. Come in, come in, come in. So, we've got um, two fittings for you today. Um, mess dress and your service dress. And there's a story behind the need for them. I foolishly thought that my dry cleaner wouldn't um, hot wash and tumble dry my uniform. It went in to be dry cleaned and came back shrunk and, and, and ruined, for want of a better word, um, which was very unfortunate, certainly um, right in the, around the time of remembrance and, and all of the other bits and bobs I had going on. Right, you've got a little bit of room in your waist. Do you want me to leave it in or do you want me to take a smidgen out? Uh, you take a touch out. Just pull them up a little bit so they're tight underneath the crotch. Funnily enough, I, I picked it up and two days later was Anzac Day, so I was, at, I was in, in London um, parading at the Cenotaph, um, but I had to do it in a suit because my, my service dress had been ruined. And then subsequently two weeks ago, I was, um, I was giving a, a, an after-dinner speech at, at a charity event for the Felix Fund. Um, and again, I had to do it in dinner jacket because my, I didn't have mess dress. Um, so, so yeah, it, was, it, it has that little bit of embarrassment by it because I don't have the uniform I should be wearing. How's the back feel? Not too tight? No, it's right. Good. I mean, I'm on my, my third set of um, mess kit now um, and my third set of service dress as well. I, I, do, I, I, I do a lot more now than I, I did before my award, so all of the, the public duty pieces I do, a lot for the core, a lot for the MOD, um, the charity work I do. Um, so I, I do spend a lot of time in and out of, of those uniforms. The reason Kim wears his mess and service dress more than most is because in 2010 he was awarded the George Cross after defusing seven Taliban bombs in a single day. Kim has chosen Samuel Brothers to make his bespoke new kit. The company, established in 1830, has recently been appointed tailors to the Queen as a royal warrant holder. Since World War I, the business has focused on military attire. The company is now owned by Lee, who is ex-military himself. How's it going, all right? Yeah, good. Excellent. Just finished the mess dress. Right, lovely. So we'll get straight into the service dress. I'll give you the trousers and let you get changed. That's good. So Lee, you clearly get into a bit of a zone when you're going through the fitting process. Is there, is there sort of an order of, of things that you do? How does it work? We're, we're constantly checking whilst we're, whilst whilst he's got it on because this will all be this will all come apart and it'll be recut um, and then from there providing this fitting goes well then um, we'll go for finish um, and hopefully we'll do a final fitting and if it's good then he can take delivery of it yeah. but we, we're, we're looking for telltale signs now um, if there's something really fundamentally wrong then I'm going to be concerned um, but that's on the whole that's a pretty good first Fit. So we've already measured him. Um, we just need to check the length now, and, um, and we're pretty much pretty much finished. So I'm just checking the front and back now, just to make sure that that's all level, and we're happy. Yeah. I'm going to leave uh, Kim in peace for a few minutes. Now you know what surprises me about that whole process, and that's actually how quick it was for that first fitting. It's only 20 minutes. A few chalk marks here, a few notes, and then the uniforms go off to Harwich for the next stage of the Samuel Brothers process. Claire, hi, welcome to Harwich. Thank you, good to see you again. You? I'm excited to see what happens here today. The last time we saw Kim's uniforms, they were looking good, but there was Seem to be a long way to go, fair to say, I think. Absolutely. So um, this is going to be the finished product. So we've done the first fitting. Mm -hmm. um, and what happens now is that all got bundled up, came back to down to Harwich. Um, and we come to this stage whereby um, Cindy is unpicking. Um, and, um, and then it will be prepared for the next stage of, of, of recutting. Great. So Cindy, explain a little bit about what you're doing and the, the difficulties of the job. Um, well, I'm actually I'm picking a mess jacket. Um, once you know what you're doing, you know, this doesn't take too long, as you can see. 
all unravels, all that work. Yeah, yeah exactly. So this is the bundle that Cindy's uh, unpicked and that's now ready for Gordon to recut. So Gordon, you are the pattern cutter. Correct. And you are involved in the next stage of the process. Just mm -hmm. explain to us what you do. Well, once we get the, the notes from Aldershot, we hmm. then uh, will lay the garment out on the table and basically do the alterations which were said on, on the notes. Mm -hmm. So on this one, it's uh, reduce the shoulder, uh, which has already been marked, yep. uh, and take off any inlays and trim the line into to the front. To match it. To match it. Well, we've now seen the unpicking process and the cutting. So, Lee, what happens, what happens right, now? Right, so this is Kim's mess kit, and this is now going to go through, and we're going to start making and finishing it off now. Fourteen staff work in Harwich. They're multi-skilled, but tend to specialise in areas like lining, braiding or buttons. The company sources all their cloth from UK mills. The majority of their business comes from word of mouth. We're still um, very traditional. Um, we still cut by hand um, and we still use um, paper patterns and card patterns. Um, we, don't, we haven't engaged with modern technology. Um, for us, that works. Um, it might be that long term we need to consider these options as we move forward, um, but it works. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. It takes just over two hours for the uniform to be ready for the final edition of Kim's George Cross to his medal ribbons. Kim is a special customer naturally because he's a George Cross recipient. Um, but all our customers, you know, it, it's special. It's it's you know it's good for the staff. It, it's very niche business. Um, we don't have a great deal of of, of competition in uh, in what we do. Um, and I think that's what makes it unique and special, and I think that's why we're still here after 180 odd years. The next time we see Kim's uniforms, we'll be back in order shop for that very final fitting, when hopefully they'll be looking a little bit more like this. Kim, how are you? Good to see you. Right, well, mess we've dress. got um, mess dress and service dress to, to, to try on now, so I think what we'll do, perhaps try the mess dress first. This might be the final fitting, but if anything needs to be changed, the whole process of marking, pinning, unpicking and cutting would start again. Attention to detail like this doesn't come cheap. Each uniform costs around £1,000. Having a, um, a bespoke bit of, of kit made for you is, is special in itself. You know, it's not off the shelf. It's, um, uh, it's made specifically for you um, by true professionals. You know, this is, you can almost go as far as say this is a sort of dying trade. Good. So we just put the, uh, the coat on there. From an untrained eye, this is looking pretty good. What, from a tailored perspective, Lee, what are you thinking? Yes, first impressions, uh, very good. Um, all I'm going to do now is just double check that I'm absolutely happy that with the, the fit. So I'll be asking Kim how he feels and just checking that that everything is good to go so we can take it away with him today. I've been very fortunate in, in what I've done, so, you know, and, and to be able to stand there in, in my uniform um, with, with my career behind me, to stand proud in my uniform is, is very key and very important to me. Good, happy, very happy. Yeah, it's great, man. Mega. Yeah.